town. Um, we had arranged a uh, tentative, um, tentatively did someone to, to give a, a guest lecture, but it fell through. So um, uh, we're going to have to uh, today just go on to material um, that I was hoping would be uh, covered by a uh, little bit by by that lecture touched on by it. Um, uh, I do know that Riley, I asked uh, if you want to give a little bit of a spiel for your project. Could we do that at the end of class? Yeah. Okay, um, that would be uh, that would be great. Um, uh, related to student uh, feedback on uh, the project side, I put in some um, dates for project milestones, uh, starting with a milestone later this month. Uh, I believe the date is the 11th uh, for the first one, and then we're going to have a second milestone, and then we'll have a final project. The milestones aren't associated with uh, with marking, but they are associated with feedback, and they're more to, to give me a sense that you're making progress um, towards a, uh, a defined project deliverable. So um, again, we have quite a few people within this class. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, my hope is that people can coalesce into teams. There's quite a number of projects which are listed on the course site. And some people here have been very proactive in talking with me about project ideas and getting started already. So if you haven't, um, you might want to think about coming to office hours this week or make an appointment with me separately during the week so that um, we could either get you on an existing team or carve out some project idea for yourself, okay? So um, when I was away, I had asked you to, um, uh, to take a look at a video, um, a video where I had demonstrated um, the use of Vensim to model certain types of phenomena. Can anyone tell me what was that video on? Infectious disease model. That's right. And uh, what I commented last time was that um, the the same sort of issues that come into play with infectious disease modeling um, come into play with modeling other phenomena that exhibit that exhibit this sort of phenomena of contagion spread from one individual to another, one organization to one another, etc. Can anyone give me some other examples of those sort of phenomena that exhibit contagion? Where is there a situation where um, the, the presence of another individual with a certain characteristic is a risk factor for you developing that characteristic, to put it in, a, in a health science terms? To, to what, uh, what other situations would someone else presenting a characteristic lead to it be more likely that you'd come to acquire that characteristic? Smoking. Smoking is a great example. It's not commonly thought of it as a communicable disease, but Jim Copeman from University of Michigan has an interesting paper uh, where he argues that smoking is in fact a, a communicable risk factor and merits being treated in many ways as sort of an infectious phenomenon. What's another example though? Okay, violence is another great example. Uh, violence can spread from one one person to another. And in fact, I've been approached um, by researchers who are researching violence politically worldwide, um, political violence, uh, about the application of some of the type, same types of models we built here to that area. Because the phenomena have a certain, um, certain similarity. How about something that's less uh, overtly negative? Mean. Oh, yeah, mean, exactly. Some, um, some sort of uh, idea about um, the way the world is, some sort of sense as to what a um, uh, desirable attitude would be, some sort of uh, sense for what's important. These, these types of uh, ideas or concepts or attitudes spread amongst people. And we can use models to characterize those spreads. Um, how about in the commercial side? Where does this come in commercially? Spread of one thing to another. 
Sorry? Yeah, advertising, marketing. Um, much of marketing these days is spent trying to secure person-to-person uh, -person communication by word of mouth or by, I don't know how you'd say it, word of Twitter. Um, uh, it, people, people talked, you know, as early as a decade and a half ago about things going viral. And then that analogy that draws on infectious diseases um, speaks to some underlying truth that the situation is similar when ideas spread about what's a desirable product or what's an attractive thing to buy, whether it's a car or a stock or a, uh, a product like an iPhone or what have you, these things spread person to person by word of mouth. So the models we'll be looking at here are most directly applied to infectious diseases, but they can be directly adapted to other areas. And indeed, if you, if you were to go on the web and look up BAS diffusion model, B-A-S-S -S diffusion model, you'll find some of these same model forms being applied in the marketing area in the area of the spread of products. And there's other applications to spread of innovation, for example. Um, so um, the mathematics and the, the structure of the models we'll be looking at today have um, quite a lot of generality to them. So uh, what I'm going to do here is to um,